Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So today we're going to be making some temperature measurements using this little guy. So this is a Max 31856. So this is a thermocouple amplifier slash converter that communicates over SPI and it can interface with uh, pretty much any type of thermocouple. So it's compatible with types K, J, N, uh, R, S, T, E, or B type thermocouples. So I bought this thing from Adafruit and as you can see it comes in this bare breakout board configuration. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is solder on these header pins. So I've got a completely separate video showing how to do this. So if you're interested feel free to click on the card in the upper right to get to that video. And I'm going to go ahead and do this off screen and we'll be back in a second. All right, so here we are. We've got this uh, all soldered up, so all the header pins are on. So now let's go ahead and see if we can get this talking to an Arduino. So let's just go ahead and chuck all of these onto a breadboard, and uh, let's get these things wired up. All right, so before we go to physically wire up the board, maybe we should look at a schematic of how we're going to do this. So again, you've got the Arduino up here. You've got the uh, breakout board down here. Um, if you read the specs, there's a lot of good documentation on this Max 31856. Um, so VIN right here, we're going to hook that up to 5 volts coming from the Arduino. GND is just the ground, um, which again, we'll tie it to the ground of the Arduino. Um, this thing communicates via SPI, so I don't want to get into the uh, nitty gritty of SPI right now. There's a, a lot of other details and videos on this, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the SPI, the clock signal right here. We're going to tie that to pin 13 on the Arduino, and maybe what we should mention is I'm using an Arduino Nano, and if you look up the pinouts on the Arduino Nano, we'll see that it does support SPI either um, on these pins, it uh, looks like pins 11, 12, right? Those are the MOSI and the MISO, or I guess sometimes they've been renamed to the, I think this is circuit out peripheral in and circuit in peripheral out instead of the master out slave in and master in slave out. I think it's just different terminology. In fact, I think you can even read um, down here. Oh yeah, down, yeah, you can see right here, right? Depending on who you're talking to, these are different things, but they're they're referred to differently, but they're the same thing, right? These are basically used for SPI communication. So pins 11 and 12 are used for communicating in and out. And then pin 13, you can see here, is the clock signal for SPI communication. So we're gonna use those three plus pin 10 for the chip select feature. So uh, that's the game plan. So let's come back to my fritzing diagram. Oh, and maybe this is a great time to mention that this diagram uh, here, as well as any of the Arduino code that I'm going to show, um, feel free to check out the description of this video to uh, get um, a link to a GitHub page, which has all of this uh, artifacts for you. You can download them as well if you want to follow along. So anyway, that being said, so we've got the clock signal right here to pin 13 on the Arduino. We've got the SDO, which is basically the data coming out of the breakout border, out of the chip, right? So this is out, which gets communicated over here to the master in slave out, or pin 12 on the Arduino. And then similarly, the SDI, or the data coming in, or coming from the microcontroller to the board, right? That's going to be tied to pin 11, which again, remember, that was the MOSI, or the master out slave in signal for SPI. And then lastly, the la only thing we need is the uh, CS, the chip select. So chip select uh, is going to be tied. We're going to use pin 10. Um, and again, remember these pins, it's 10, 11, 12, and 13. Those are the ones we're going to use. That's going to be uh, important later when we start writing some code for it. That's pretty much those connections. And then the last thing is obviously you're going to want to make sure that you hook up the thermocouple. Um, so the thermocouple, you're going to have to have one end of the lead going into one side of this breakout, uh, the screw terminal, and then the other side of the thermocouple going in here. So again, just got to be a little careful. I believe if you have the two of them reversed, um, you will get inaccurate reading. So just be careful which way you are wiring this in. So that's the, uh, the game plan. Let's just go look and uh, see if we can make this happen in real life now. All right, so here we are. It's all wired up. Um, I will mention that here's my thermocouple. And again, I got a, a unit from Adafruit. It's this guy right here. So it's a K-type thermocouple with a stainless steel tip. So you can kind of see the thermocouple is encased in this sort of a stainless steel tip here. 
Okay, so this is pretty much it. Uh, again, I don't think there's anything too much to uh, to mention. It pretty much follows the diagram we looked at earlier. Although, uh, one thing I will mention is um, my thermocouple, when it was shipped, the two leads, they were actually pinched together and it looked like a single lead. So that was a little bit confusing for me. I had to go and figure out how to take them apart and make sure that they weren't touching so that I could get them um, uh, into both ends of this terminal. So again, just make sure that you've got both sides separated, not touching, um, and cleanly spaced and going into this screw down terminal. Um, okay, so otherwise, I think that's pretty much uh, it for the hardware. Um, now let's go ahead and get some software to, to run this and talk to the thermocouple breakout board. All right, so to get something up and running quickly, let's go ahead and just use a library that Adafruit has already uh, written for this particular unit. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is open up my Arduino IDE like this, and then uh, let's go here to File Preferences. I just want to look and see where are we installing a new library. So if you look here in the sketchbook location, this might be something different for you. You see, I've gone ahead and set mine to a custom location. Let me just go ahead and show you that folder right here. So this has a bunch of other libraries that we've already installed. Okay, so now that we've got that location, we can go ahead and come up here to sketch and say include library and click on manage libraries. And if you give this a couple of seconds to open up, what we should see is a, a list of all of the libraries that we have installed, as well as it'll give us a search bar to be able to search for any libraries that we want to add. So as you can kind of see, we've already got some of these over here on the right. But as soon as this go ahead and loads up, what we're going to want to do is search for this Max 31856. So let's come up here in the search bar and just type in Max 31856 and hit search. And hopefully, okay, come on, is it going to load? There it is. Okay. Here it is. Uh, check this out. Yep, Adafruit already has a library for this thermocouple. And uh, you can click on more info if you'd like. And I think that takes you actually to the GitHub page where you can kind of see some of the code and what's going on. But all we're going to want to do is click on install. And we should hopefully get... There you go. Did you see that thing just pop up? There it is. And let's give it a second to update and cleanly... Uh, close. Yep, there we go. It's all installed. So let me go and hit close here. And as you saw, it just added this right here. So we should have all of the code, which is basically, I believe, pretty much the same as what's up on the GitHub page. So as you can see, yep, we've got this. So we should now be able to go ahead and use that in our sketches. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up one of the examples that uh, come with the library. So I'm going to come up here to File, ex oops, Examples, and then down to here, the Adafruit Max 31856 library. And uh, let's come down here and do this one-shot um, sketch. Okay, I can close this sketch in the back. I don't need him anymore. Again, this is just going to basically pull up. Again, you could actually manually do that if you wanted by coming to your sketchbook location, Manual. Right, here it is. So here's here's the INO file. You can see it over here. So just to quickly talk through it, um, so you can see right here that it already has the pins set up like we had talked about earlier in our wiring diagram. So we are using hardware SPI, but for now, let's just use software SPI. So you can see that's actually the version, the line seven here is not uh, commented, whereas line nine is commented. So we're going to come out here and use the hardware SPI in just a second. But for now, let's just use what they're referring to as software SPI. Um, so again, here's our pins 10, 11, 12, 13 for uh, chip select, uh, digital input, digital output to the chip, and then the clock signal. So that's all set up. You can see all they're doing here with this example is uh, starting a serial monitor with this baud rate, right? So just keep that in mind. We might have to change that in a second. And then um, what we're going to do is go ahead and set the thermocouple type so it looks like it's a type K, which is perfect because that is the type that we actually hooked up to our system. So that should pretty much be it. It should just then go through and loop and read the cold junction temperature, read the thermocouple temperature, and then just basically print it out uh, to the screen along with any faults that are encountered, and then wait a second and then repeat. So tell you what. Um, Let's go ahead and uh, upload this to the board. And 
Um, what I'll do is I'll start a little picture in picture so you can see what the real thermocouple looks like as they were going. Okay, so that went ahead and flashed up here. Let's go ahead and start the serial monitor. Okay, and make sure, oh yep, it's the right baud rate. Aha, and it, perfect, right? So here, check this out. It says K-type, that's exactly what we want. And look at this, we're getting thermocouple readings um, and cold junction temperature readings with the one second pause between. So again, you can kind of see this seems pretty accurate, right? Uh, the thermocouple is sitting at the same temperature as the cold junction approximately. So tell you what, let's uh, let's go ahead and play some games. Let me walk over here to, the, to where I've got the real setup and we can start playing with it. So again, you can see the thermocouple is out here. This is, looks like what the ambient air temperature is reading. Um, just for giggles, let's calibrate this also. Let's go ahead, let me, let me see what the temperature of this, yep, yeah, everything seems to agree within a few degrees, right? Okay, so now let's go ahead and stick the thermocouple in the cold water, okay? And you should be able to see the thermocouple measurement changing on the Arduino. Let me go ahead and also, I'm gonna go get a temperature measurement with my, uh, uh, touchless IR gun. So this is what, 11 degrees Celsius? Let's go back, let me go see. Yeah, that looks, uh, yeah, pretty pretty reasonable, right? Um, so the thermocouple responded. Now let's go ahead and do the opposite. Let's go and put it in the hot. Okay, we should be able to see something change. And again, let me go and get a temperature reading of what the hot temperature, so it's, it's really, it's kind of more like warm. <laughs> I don't know, you can see 45-ish degrees Celsius. And I think we're getting those readings. You can see a change up here on the screen. So yeah, this is looking pretty darn uh, awesome. Looks like this is working. You know, and in fact, while we've got all this set up, let me close the serial monitor. Let's come back to our example. Let's go ahead and now see if we can use the hardware SPI, namely the built-in SPI features on the board. So I'm just gonna go ahead and comment out line seven and uncomment line nine. And then again, re-upload this guy. Okay. There we go. Okay, it uploaded. So again, let's go ahead and start our serial monitor. And yep, this looks like it's working as well. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'll move it from the hot over to the cold side. And let's just make sure the thermocouple responds. And yes, it does indeed. So it actually looks like this is working both for software SPI and hardware SPI. Um, and I think we've got everything hooked up pretty nicely. All right, so this worked quite well, but um, I'm a little unsatisfied in the sense that I still don't understand how this actually operates in the sense that this code, right, we basically just downloaded it from uh, the internet, right? Somebody else wrote it and we're just using it. So all of the functionality, right? You see, this is only a 56 line script, but it's all buried in this class, this Adafruit Max 31856 class, right? It has all of these different uh, methods on it, like get thermocouple type, reading the temperature. So all of the details on how to actually interface with the device using the SPI um, protocol and the different registers on the device, that's all hidden from us. So what I'd like to do in our next video is actually take a look at rewriting all of that code basically from scratch. So we are not going to need any of this fancy pre-written code. We are instead going to do this by hand so we understand exactly every line and how to talk to the device. The reason we want to do this is because we may want to integrate this into other environments, not just a simple Arduino environment, but things like MATLAB down the road or even Simulink um, eventually is where we're going. So. That's a little bit of a teaser of why we're gonna do this. So this is actually going to be the first out of a multi-part series talking about talk, uh, interfacing with this unit uh, via SPI and in different environments like Arduino or in MATLAB or in Simulink. So if that sounds like fun, um, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel and sticking around. Um, we'll have that new video coming out shortly. So for now, I think this is a good spot to leave it because we showed how to wire up the sensor and how to talk to it using Using this pre-made canned example just to demonstrate viability. So now this is a great jumping off point to actually investigate the data sheet of this uh, breakout board and also how to write the code uh, ourselves by hand. So that's coming up. I hope I'll catch you at that discussion. So for now, I think I'm going to sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.